All right, so I made some good progress today transitioning my 6040 OMEO X6 2200L CNC router over to the new controller and UC CNC software. And I figured I'd document my process as I go along and make more progress. And so anyone that has a 6040 like this knows that the electronics is by far the biggest shortcoming of this machine. And now that I have a product that I'd like to put into production, as well as an ATC spindle on the way from JGL, I want to upgrade the electronics. And so obviously I gutted the original enclosure, but really quickly, we're just gonna go over what was wrong with it. Um, after almost nothing, nothing was shielded at all besides a line in EMI filter and a ferret core on the unshielded VFD spindle cable to uh, minimize it as much as possible. But, you know, it's kind of like putting makeup on a pig. Uh, we had the VFD right here, and then right next to it, we had the stepper motor drivers with the signal wires that, you know, not shielded, not twisted together, nothing at all taken to reduce interference. And so a lot of people get missteps, including myself. Um, this is the original motion controller. It's a UCNC, and a lot of people report issues uh, with the drivers that it comes with. Uh, a lot of things in Mach 3 had to be customized to work with this board, and that was giving me issues as well when I tried to use the 2010 screen set and the probing feature, which was fixed, thanks to Jerry. But another thing that Omeo did was they bundled this pendant together, and the issue I would get is when I start a job that goes straight to 24,000 RPM, and the spindle speed, the connection between this and the computer drops because it came, comes with a wireless adapt, adapter. Um, I would also have connections drop between the breakout board and the PC when I would go straight to 24,000 as well, but that was resolved with a better USB cable. And so rather than having to deal with Mach 3 and all the junk in this enclosure any longer, I decided to just build a new controller altogether. I've used Mach 3 for about six years now, and um, that was kind of the final straw. So here's the enclosure that I put together. And uh, the recent progress that I made was I got the Anna Speed circuit and the UB1 working with UCNC and this Now Forever brand VFD. And so I'd like to give you guys details on that, but let's just go over the enclosure first. So. Um, temporarily mounted is of course the UC300 Ethernet mo motion controller and the UB1 breakout board. And the inside of the enclosure is dominated majority of it with the power distribution. So we have the Nutrig power con connector for the line in. That then goes through a inline EMI filter, which then goes to a Siemens 10 amp breaker. And that's where the live hit the terminal blocks. Um, this right here is something I really love. These are like 20 bucks. They're uh, power meters, DIN rail mountable. They give you the basics, uh, voltage, amperage, watts being consumed, as well as total kilowatt hours. Uh, these are Meanwell MDR series 5, 12, and 24 volt power supplies, DC. And this is a nicer 48 volt, 10 amp, SDR series. These are much more efficient, much higher quality, but at a price from Meanwell. They're not even made in China, they're made in Taiwan, whereas these are Chinese and I think these are like 86% efficient. This is like 94% efficient. And I'm sure that carries over to the quality, like voltage ripple and stuff like that as well. But um, these are the stepper drivers. They are uh, very similar to what the Omeo machine came with, but the shortcoming with the drivers that came with the machine originally is that they didn't have screw terminals. I apologize for the mess, but it's not easy building a controller and not leaving a mess behind. Um, yeah, so these come with the uh, the uh, the crimp connectors on them. These are JST XH series, uh, which I actually had, but I didn't have these, and so I figured why not just use drivers from my previous CNC project. Uh, this is actually my third CNC router in it, and it is the best mechanically speaking. So 
I figured I would build electronics that would make it really reliable. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I uh, took apart a uh, Cat5e cable for the twisted together 24 gauge wires. I have a ferret core on that going to the step and direction. Um, the UB the UB1, what I really like about it are the LED indicators for diagnostics as well as, um, you know, they have things like uh, signal plus, signal minus, or step plus, step minus on the board, so it makes wiring nice and easy. Uh, that's the 24 in. Um, and I guess, well, the, the primary goal of this enclosure, before I go on to the little details that I figured out today, the primary goal was to isolate the VFD from the rest of the electronics. So eventually when the ETC spindle comes in, I'm gonna put the VFD in its own enclosure alongside with all of the other ancillary components for uh, the spindle, like the uh, solenoid array that I know I'm gonna to have to put together for the ATC piston controls. But um, what I wanna talk about right now is the analog input for controlling the spindle speed. There's quite a bit of wires, but I'm gonna to try to make this as simple as possible. So the red wire is the X1. Now, that is the spindle forward signal. Basically, X1, the way that this VFD was configured in a lot of other 6040 machines, it has to be shorted to common or grounded uh, to have for the VFD to get the signal to run the spindle. So these two wires go towards the normally open one and COM one on the UV one. And I didn't have to make any uh, edits in the configuration. Basically, as soon as I typed in M3, uh, S24,000, uh, 24, for example, uh, it just started working right away. Of course, uh, for the speed control, whoops, for the speed control, we have the common wire, we have the analog in one, and we have the yellow wire for plus 12 volt. And these go to the anti speed circuit right there. So we have common going to A01, we have the 12 volt going to AH1, and we have the blue wire going to A01. Oh, did I mess that up? Okay, so com uh, black common goes to AL1, um, and the blue uh, analog input goes to AL1. Uh, input on the VFD. And so, uh, I've uh, configured uh, the basics in UCNC so far, so the step direction, let's actually go into that. So yeah, so, all the uh, axes are set up from the Mach 3 configuration that the machine comes with. So I think with the micro stepping uh, configuration that I had on the drivers, uh, steps per unit were 320. And I've yet to actually measure this with my machine, but it's moving the same. So I'm just gonna keep that for now. I don't plan on making chips anytime soon. Uh, 4,000 millimeters per minute velocity and 300 acceleration and z-axis is a little bit different but um uh, the profile for the ub1 came with all the proper io settings i didn't really have to customize anything except for the lim uh, the home pins because of course those had to be manually wired in um, i didn't change anything on here nothing here and um I didn't even have to touch anything on this screen yet. It seems that the UB1 profile takes care of that. So uh, the machine homes just fine. Since I don't want to wait for the homing, uh, the machine moves just fine. And uh, the spindle actually works now. So. And I think I had this running at S24,000, so I apologize for the noise, but four hundred hertz. Uh, 
yeah, that's all the progress I've made so far. If you guys have any questions, message me uh, either in the comments or directly on YouTube. Um, I will be posting this video on CNC Zone, but I don't go there too frequently. Um, another thing, uh, so the next steps for me are of course to uh, make the wiring just as nice before um, yeah, just, uh, this is a temporarily, temporarily laser cut, uh, IO panel. Once I finalize all the connections, of course, with the ATC spindle on the way, as well as a few other, uh, IO things that I have to add. Um, I don't even have an idea of what connectors I need and all that. So that's why I have this temporary access hole. Another thing I want to show is that's my cooling fan right there. It's a Delta 60 millimeter that I got it from a server, from a server power supply. And I actually added this Noctua PWM fan controller. And this is a proper PWM fan controller. It actually generates the PWM duty cycle properly. It's not voltage control. It generates the PWM pulses to properly control the speed. So, yeah, I think it uh, does over 70 CFM, which is kind of ridiculous from a 60 millimeter fan. The next thing that I have to do is I have to wire in my tool probe for the Z-axis touch-off on the workpiece. And ideally, I would also like to add a fixed tool height setter and play with the macros for that. But I'm probably just going to save that for when the ATC comes in and I start working on the tool table. Uh, this machine doesn't have a very large work area. I think it's something like 300, lower mid 300 millimeters in the X and 510 millimeters in the Y axis. And so it's going to be a bit tricky trying to minimize uh, work area and fitting as many tools as I can for the jobs that I'm going to be running on this machine. I'm thinking I'm going to mount the uh, tool rack here or in the back of the machine. Uh, this vise is temporary. This machine has, this is a six inch vise by the way, just to give you guys an idea for what I'm working with. Um, this is a, uh, for, for, you know, th things that fit in the vise, it does a good job because it lifts the workpiece up closer to the Z axis, minimizing flex, minimizing the spindle stick out and all that as well as um, the bed is very soft. You can actually push on it and see noticeable deflection. And so the vise does a good job of just stiffening things up and absorbing resonance and all that. But um, yeah, that's the first video and I look forward to progress and making a second one. Thanks for watching.